and you have to stand, and you have to keep standing, and you have to stand again, you have to keep standing, and you fall, and you get back up, and you want to quit, and you might quit, and then you start back not quitting again. Amen? But God is more than enough. Amen, Beatrice? Here is Mrs. Miss Beatrice McLean, and she's going to talk about the victories that she's had with her daughter, her child. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <clears throat> well, raising my daughter has been a beautiful experience, really. And uh, one of the challenges that I had with her was being her mother and not her friend. You know, she would always say, well, uh, my friend, her, her mama, they're best friends. I said, but I'm not your friend, I'm your mother. And I want to raise you as such. You know, and I had to do it under the leadership of the Holy Spirit because, you know, sometimes she got to be a handful. And uh, I remember once when we were growing up, she was always, she loved to go shopping. She loved pocketbooks and she loved shoes. Shoes she got from her mom. <laughs> but anyway, and I told her, I said, look, I'm going to take you in the store. I said, I'm going to get you something. I said, but I'm getting me something first, so let me look. And when you're ready, when we're ready, we'll leave. And she kept, <laughs> I said, I said, Mama, look at this. Mama, look at that. <clears throat> Mama, I'm ready to go. I said, well, I'm not ready to go yet. Oh, I'm ready to go. I said, look, don't get loud in the store. <laughs> and uh, she kept saying, oh, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to go. And make a long story short, she found herself coming from under the clothes bin. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I had to be her mother and make challenges like, well, you know, my friend got to wear so-and-so and my friend got to wear this. I said, well, I'm your mother. I'm purchasing the clothes. So you will wear what I want you to wear. I'm going to make sure you like it, but you're not going to wear anything that I don't want you to. But you know, she that's the only real problem that I had out of her. She was a good daughter. I didn't have to fuss with her about wanting to date boys early, because I said, we're not having that. And her father was saying, look, I, I have to see him first. She said, oh, Dad, don't say that. Don't do that. But she was a good girl because she stayed, She was in the church like I was raised in the church and she was raised in the church. And I admonished her from an early age to love the Lord. You know, and when I began to pray for her, I said, Lord, I want her to give her life to you. I want her to live as your child. And I continuously talked to her about the goodness of the Lord. You know, sometimes she was stubborn and didn't want to hear it. But one day she did hear the word of the Lord and she gave her life to Christ. So she's a beautiful daughter. I love her so much. So talented and so wonderful. She's a great mother herself. Because a lot of times, I didn't really train her to wash dishes and do certain things. Because I always did everything for her. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I guess, I, let me admit it. She was 18 and I was still dressing her. But, <laughs> and still dressing her. But she. She's a great girl, and the Lord helped me tremendously through all the hard times that we had and all the struggles with, that we had with her wanting to have her way sometimes. I had to prove to her that I was her mother, and she was not, I was not her friend, and that I wanted her to grow up as a lovely one, young woman, being someone that the Lord could be proud of, because her father and I are.
They grew up in the church. They worked in the church. They sang in the choir. They, and they began to love going to church. And on Saturdays, they would ask, do you like to go to church? Or? Yes, we have to go to Sunday school. We started out at Sunday school on Sunday morning. And they began to love church because they knew that was the right thing to do. And they began to ask questions about the church and about the Lord. And we had conversations about that. They played football, they played basketball, they ran track. They did things that other children did. But they also had to love the Lord. And as they grew up to know the Lord, no, I'm not saying they were the best children in the world. They, they, they were, those four was a handful. And in the house, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of laughter. And their friends began to come around us because this is what their friends saw and they wanted some of the same things. And I always had a house full of kids in my house. And I enjoyed my four and somebody else's four. <laughs> but it was just a joy. I loved and still love being a mother. I'm the mother of four and the grandmother of nine and one great grand. And it's a joy to see my grandson every morning. Now you're making me late for church, let's go. I said, Mikey, just calm down. But now, Apostle don't get me, we got to go. I said, Mikey, calm down. So he, see, he's in church, and you know, he's enjoying, he loved, he loved it, yes, you do. Oh, oh, put him on blast. I put him on blast, as they say. But I thank God, because as a young man wanting to go to church, I see that still overflowing into the grands and it will overflow into their children, their children's children. The Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. So I still see growing into my grands and hopefully the great grands, but my son, as he began to beat the drums as well when he was coming up in the church, he joined the military, he's still in the service, and now, I thank God because he's a minister of the gospel, but yet in the military. He's stationed in Kansas, but, and he's still raising his son in the church, and he's asking questions that his dad asks. Dad, do we have to go to church tomorrow? Yes, LJ, we got to go to church tomorrow. So we have to do what the Bible says, and the Bible says raise them in the household of faith. No, they don't. They, they don't want to go. Just saying, when you were small, you didn't really want to go even when your mom and dad told you to go to church in the morning. You didn't want to go. But we, if we keep them there, they will begin to love service, they'll love the Lord, and they'll love being in church. Raise them, as the Bible said. And I thank God for my poor and your poor. God bless you and have them happy. <laughs> take them home with you. And, and, and take them back home with you when they come. God bless you. <laughs>
I need to carry about my honey to you, yeah. That I had raised. So I've done everything but birth the child. Live really, because when my nieces and nephews, this is how funny it got to be. When my nieces and nephews would get hurt, I remember a couple times going with my brother-in-laws to the hospital. I think about that, that, that my sister should have been there, but they said, you go, Shirley, you go, you can keep them calm. I was the family babysitter. So I could, I, I could keep the children calm when the doctors were sore them up because they failed and gas the head and gas this and gas that. So I'm in the car with the brother law running to the hospital to take the kids. Um, but I could keep them calm. Um, I just had that, I guess, that natural mother, mother instinct. And when my best friend had her children, I always say, I kept, got to become a mother directly through her with the same age. So, so I went every pregnancy and everything. I came, we came home with a time where I didn't get a chance to see her birthday because they wouldn't let me. They wouldn't, they wouldn't let anybody in the birthday room as they do now. But when she had the little boy, my godson, um, she had it in May. My birthday is May also. But that baby, uh, I felt sorry for her when she would come in the church doors. The moment he spotted me, he would leave his mother and come. In. He wouldn't stay with her. And she used to tell me, you will have a baby, we're going to do you the same way. Uh, but it was so loving and nurturing for me. Amen. Just so loving and nurturing. And I had a mother. My mother was an absolute beautiful woman. Um, just, so, just so loving, so caring, so nurturing. Uh, she had that nurturing quality about her. She used to call it mother wit. Some people have mother wit, some people don't. Well, she had it, and my mother was saying, our house was full of kids also. I realize now, it was because of the way we were brought up. She did, she brought us up to go to church, she brought us up to love the Lord, she brought us up to love yourself, and to be uh, respectful. And let me just tell you this as mothers. Your children are watching you. That is a true saying. It's not all of what you say, but it's a lot of what you do. I am part of the woman I am today because of my mother, the way she was. And I can think of two things that I did not do before I ever got in church strong. You know, when you're a young girl and growing up and as a teenager, I never cursed, never had a desire. You know why? My mother did. I never drank, never had a desire. You know why? My mother did. And I used to hear her talk a long time ago when we were growing up. The women would come and sit down and they sometimes they would smoke a little bit and play them cards. And I would, and the kids supposed to be out of the room. See, young kids don't know that, but some of you others know. When the grown folks came over, the kids had to go in another room. Well, I would hear them talking. And I remember them talking about a lady one time that was, had gotten too drunk and all this stuff and she was very, she doing some disrespectful things out in the public. And they were talking about how terrible that look and how disrespectful. And it was embarrassing for the woman. And I remember hearing my mama say, you know, she said, I never, well, she used to smoke, she said, I never drank it. She said, cursing like that. She said, she never desired to do it. And I said then, my mother doesn't do it, I won't do it. And I never did. Never had a desire. And then after I got in Christ, of course, I did. But it was because my mother. It was because of the example that I saw her, you know, the way she dressed, the way she carried herself, and not allowing us, and she didn't talk like that, and not allowing us to talk like that. It just wasn't ladylike. So do know, ladies, uh, you all have a, uh, a it is a, a gift, and a calling, and a joy to be a mother. But do know that your children are watching you. Uh, and thank God for you. Thank God for it. And it's also the nurturing part of God. That's the way I see it too. It's the nurturing part of God that God put in a woman to be able to share his love like nobody else. There's nothing like a mother's love. You all know the stories how women have taken cars off of children. And uh, men can, they can't even figure out how she did it. Something about, about, about that mother's love. There was a while when people are watching the movie stuff. You see some stuff? Sometimes you see them, those women, you make mistakes. You, you, mess, you mess with a woman's children and you see what kind of desire come up inside of her. But thank God for your happy mother's day. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, thank you. Uh, I've got some other things to say. I think I saw, didn't I see Donnie? 
Come in here. Um, okay, Miss Tanya. Come on up and share the victories that you've had as a mom. And anybody else, raise your hand and we'll let it in. If, you, if, if everybody's not doing that, then. I mean, if everybody's okay with it, then this will be the last one. I'm going to share some things and then we're going to be finished for the day. And oh, oh, Mr. Jackson, want to say something? Okay. You not you didn't get my one hundred texts. So the thing about it, I'm saying, 
and my, oh, the thing about my mother, she always felt like, you know, she was in the church, she felt like she wasn't like, doing anything. And then one day God revealed to me that she was the pastor of the house. Amen. The pastor of the house. And had to tell my mom, she was just, you were the pastor of the house. God had put you in that spot to make sure that your sons and your daughter will walk up right before him. Amen. Amen. I just wanted to say that even though we're as children, you do pay attention to your parents. Yes. And the parents, as I am myself, I have kids myself, I realize I'm a light mm -hmm. unto them. Not to say you're not going to fall on your face here and there, but to say you stand anyway and be that light. And when you be the light, you will see the results. What God will do. We waited 42 generations, according to the scriptures, for Jesus Christ to come. There was a period of time before he came. That's why we, when we speak things, we speak it and hold firm to it. Because they don't say it's going to happen tomorrow. Right. But we do know. He said his word will not return <laughs> to you, boy. Yes. But it will, it will accomplish that right. which will set up the do. The same thing with us. Yes. Realize that the light that's in us, inside of you is not just a light to be played with, but it's a light that when you're speaking, you're speaking life. Yes. And it will come to pass. Yes. So that's what we saw in my mother. We saw that the word of God was established in her. We saw the anointing of God being flowed through her. I saw the, uh, the, my mother lay hands on the sick on my brother who had a piece of glass stuck in his chest, deep down in his chest. She pulled it out and laid hands on him. And right there in, I, my, in front of my eyes, I watched the wound heal up. And she took, she took a person who ran in the streets and live a life that was off track, totally. And put that person into God. And God used that person to perform miracles. Oh, yes. That tells you something. Yes. Hold firm. Yes. This life is a real life that you are living. Yes. Hold firm. And things will turn out like this. The word said it would do. Thank you. Okay, that's all I'm going to say about that one. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. If anybody else, any children want to say anything, anybody else want to say anything, you know. Huh? Off camera. Off camera. No, I don't have a Facebook on. Go ahead.
And ever since I told him to turn the lights off, he's been turning the lights off. I'm talking about all these lights up here. And so it's wonderful that you choose. You know what? It's never easy, but it's always good. When we birthed these children in the earth, it was painful. And then sometimes, we knew that pain went away, right? But sometimes they bring us pain and it don't seem like it's going away. But thank God that mothers are nurturers. So let me just say this before we go. And, and, and I, I was glad for him to say, all you moms are pastors in the home. I know the husband is supposed to be what? The head. The head he is. And the husband is also the priest of the home. But guess what? The priest of the home can't be the priest if the pastor of the home ain't helping put keep things in order. Amen. You follow me? And so thank God for the men, the men of God as well. But mothers, if you if you are a mom, and you, you know, those of you moms in here, if you have a mom, you know you, you're breathing right now. If nobody's birth in this earth, well, now I got all these peachy, peachy dishes, so I can't say that. But anyway, <laughs> the normal Birthing is through a woman. Amen? Amen. So uh, nothing else, and for, for nothing else, you got breath, you should be thankful. Mothers are the emotional backbones of the family. They provide the holding place for everyone's feelings and do their best to keep us from being hurt. You hear me? My mother, bless her heart, anytime a boys would go to jail, she right there to get them out. I said, Mama, won't you let them stay in jail? My child ain't staying in no jail. So we couldn't, you know, she got him out. She, she said, no, my children. That's okay. So, you know, when, when you get hurt, she turns around and kisses you. Kisses the womb. Now we know they hands on the womb, right? Uh, uh, Robert's mom pulled that piece of glass. Good gracious of life. And saw a miracle right there. Thank God for that. So the mother seals our wounds physical and emotional. Truly our mothers work hard and made sacrifices. How many of you made, you're not going to raise your hand, but you made sacrifices. Some of you had to make sacrifices that you fed your child before you got it. You ate it. Yes. Some of you made sacrifices when you know you didn't have money, you didn't let them worry about it. So our lives would be better. The